Hi everyone, it's Melody with Design by Melody. I am here with my seventh and I think a final layout using my Stampin' Up! Memories in the Making kit. Um, as you can see, I already have my photos laid out here and I have my products kind of sitting off to the side. And the reason I do is because I was flipping through here trying to decide if it would even be possible for me to use this kit for this layout. I wasn't sure. These pictures are actually from when we were out watching the Christmas parade for Kaylin's birthday in 2015. And so when I flipped through it, I realized I thought I was going to include a lot more Christmas than what I do. And I don't think I even include any Christmas in the end. But because it's his birthday, I figure it actually could still work with this kit. This kit is more of a summery, springy kind of feel to it. But again, it's his birthday and there are a few balloons and a couple of like um, different things in the kit that, that could work for that. So the very first thing I'm doing is kind of a little bit of a title down here at the bottom. I have a picture, not a better, not a very good picture, but a picture of Kaylin and myself um, at the bottom. And I'm just making, um, I'm piecing together a couple things on top of this four by six card. So I took the gold foiled acetate card and I flipped it over. And when I realized I flipped it over last time I was looking at these cards, I realized that it's silver foil on the opposite side. So if you are opposed to gold or you prefer silver, um, flip them over. I I didn't even realize it but on the opposite side it's silver versus the gold on the front side so I'm just layering it on top of that grid card that has a balloon on it and then I'm putting our photo on the other side of this four by six card now this this layout it's kind of um, just a companion page to his actual birthday layouts um, these are just some other photos of that day of my family and the different people that were there with us so that's kind of why this one doesn't have the best photo of him because this page is not really about him this is more about what we we did that day. So I'm just going to create a title down here at the bottom. Now I was looking, I was kind of going to the, well, I wasn't kind of, I actually did go to Stampin' Up's website and was looking to see if this kit's available. And the, um, I think the accessory one of them is available, whether it's the cards or the accessory pack. One of them is available, not both of them. And remember, this is two kits. This is the accessory pack as well as the um, kit, as well as the card pack. So when I was going there, though, I realized that, oh, yeah, I forgot. These are watercolor paper die cuts. And I don't really watercolor, but I could use markers on them. So I pulled out Kaylin's brush markers that... Um, we got a couple months ago when we were at Michael's, he asked if he could have them and they were on sale. And I was like, sure, why not? And I use them periodically. So I just took out his brush markers and I'm coloring in a couple of them. Um, I wanted to add a few black elements on here just to kind of be a contrast to all the bright colors. So I colored in the camera and I, it's not perfect coloring, but I kind of like the distressed kind of look to it I guess that it has or imperf imperfect look that it has and I'm um I cut out the word highlights and I just made a banner I'm going to layer that on top of the camera I of course if you've watched my um, process videos for a while you will know that in my project life uh, spreads I do four four by six I'd use the design a page protectors and I keep my four by six um, photos or cards um, on with a white border and then um, and if the pattern is pale enough on the card itself I won't add a white border because it gives the appearance of that lightness around the edge um, and I keep those pockets squared and then um, with squared corners and then the four by six pockets in the middle I always measure them up to a project life um, a project life card like an actual project life branded cards now these are project life branded cards but they're um they're sold through stampin up so they are the correct size the only thing is that these are squared corners versus project life cards are rounded corners so i like the consistency of the same thing throughout my album so i keep my four by six pockets with squared corners and then i round the corners of my three by four pockets so that's what you're seeing me do is as i work on these cards i'm just rounding the corners as i go so I took a few more of these little die cuts and I wanted to do the red because I felt like it kind of would uh, match the highlights as well as the um, balloon. But then when I colored that little red plus sign, it looked like the red cross to me. So I was like, oh, I can't, <laughs> I can't put a red cross symbol on top of a heart. Like, okay, that totally takes this layout in a different direction. And that's not the direction I was going. So I take that off and that was just a test anyways. Um, after I had put the second layer of ink, it didn't look the best. So that one just is going to get trashed it's not going to get used it just doesn't work um, now that I've altered it uh, too many times so I am putting my title down here as I mentioned it's just I wanted to use the white 
alphas that came in the kit, but it's just, it's, it's not noticeable enough on that acetate um, silver polka dot card. So I'm just going through the four by four cards to find one that has um, something I can cut off. And so I cut off this blue strip off of this card and I'm putting birthday on top of here. And I'm just going to create a couple banners here to make my title. So it's going to say this birthday boy. And this kit came with two alphas. It was a skinnier black font and then this bolder, more um, block font from um, that's in white. They're almost the same height, but you'll see I'm going to use the black alphas here. They're much, much skinnier and much, much skinnier. So um, it's a nice kind of contrast, but they are both perfect sizes to use on Project Life cards. There's plenty of space to use these and make and you get two sheets of each of them so you get a good amount of letters one sheet I think is not enough you can make a few titles but just not that many two sheets is almost perfect three sheets would probably be a bit overkill so <laughs> two sheets is probably perfect um, for the number of cards that you get in this kit which is so ridiculous by the way if you are a person who doesn't like to buy um, project life kits like the core kits this would be a great 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 kit for you to buy because you get over a hundred cards you get a hundred cards between the three by four four by six and four by four plus you get the little two by two um cards as well so you get over a hundred cards and i didn't even use half of them i've made what seven layouts with this kit and i still haven't even used half of them i'm running out of embellishment though which is why i'm going to end the kit i believe but um there's so many cards and there's a ton of journaling cards too, which is really nice to have grid lines or, um, or, uh, yeah, grid lines or just lined cards. It's kind of nice to have that because sometimes you get too many decorative cards and not of journaling cards. Um, I end up using most of the decorative cards in this kit and you will see that in my kill a kit video at the end. Um, Actually, I think it'll be up in a few days. So keep an eye out for that if that is something that you would like to see. I've got all these little stickers that are left, and I'm just kind of flipping through to see what I can use. And whenever I'm working with a kit, I always use all the little off-cut pieces. I keep them. I do not throw them away. The only time I'll throw them away is if it's like something that's... Well, actually, I keep almost everything until I'm done with the kit. And then once I'm done with the kit, I will throw away like the um, pieces that are less than an eighth of an inch. I took that little circle uh, sticker that had a heart cut out of the middle of it and I backed it with that um, brighter blue color. I'm going to change it though because I don't really like the way that it looks. I feel like it's just kind of hanging out on that photo. So I'm going to take this black frame that you just saw me put on this card and I'm going to cut it up and use it in a few different places. I'm trying to see what else I have in this kit. I have these wood veneer cards and though they are beautiful, I will never use them. It just isn't going to happen. <laughs> I don't like wood veneer 3x4 cards. I just have realized that that's not my preferred thing. So I also have my little Ellie Studio die cut pack um, boxes sitting next to me as I have had for the last couple layouts that I've done with this kit. Um, if you missed the last Kit Day Thursday video, make sure you go back and check it out because I, I show how I store my die cuts and then that's where I'm pulling from. So I'm layering one that just says celebrate over top of a gray one and it's just going to be a banner. This one is just a filler card. There's not going to be any journaling or anything on this card. I also pulled out the um, ampersand um, watercolor die cut and I'm going to use that on that top photo. I have another die cut from the LA Studio pack that just says I love everything about this or I heart everything about this and that brings a little bit of red down there to the bottom photo and that's just a picture of my mom and my older sister talking about the boys and I think they're pointing to the boys um Kaylin and um Walter Walter is the nephew that is closest to Kaylin in age he's about what do we say like 16 15 16 months younger than Kate no uh, a year and five months. So that would be like 17 months younger than, than Kaylin. Um, almost exactly. So they're very close though. Even though we live three hours apart, they have the most special bond whenever we go visit or they come visit us. Those boys just, oh, they have so much fun together. I'm going to cut out this speech bubble from this two by two card. This is another, these are those two by two cards that I was mentioning before. Um, I don't scrapbook with four by four pockets or two by two pockets. So I am using these cards for the elements that are on them. I'm either cutting them up or trimming them down to make them three by four cards or, um, 
using them as is on top of another card, something like that. But I've really enjoyed having the flexibility in this kit. And I'll, in my kit review um, video that I'll put up next week, I will go into detail about what I liked about the kit, what I didn't like about the kit, what I have left and what I used up. So if you want to go back and check that or keep an eye out for that, make sure you hit a subscribe. And then if you hit the little notification bell next to the subscribe button, you'll get notifications of when I post and you'll see all of these things um, come up for you. I do, um, I was like, what am I doing? I'm putting glue on it. <laughs> I do try to use everything that's possible in this kit. I, um, really try to use a kit to its fullest before I am done with it, quote unquote, done with it. Now I will not get rid of any of the supplies though. I will put that in my regular stash and it will start going through my rotation of stash kits because I'm making it a point to make a good many stash kits this year. And I have already been working with one. If you are new to my channel, I do kit day Thursday, which is where I use a kit. Um, and I just rotate through the kits I have after this kit, I'm probably going, going to be using, um, actually, um, if it's not up already, you'll see a like a kit share video of what the kit I'll be using next. So keep an eye out for that. But on, so I have kit day Thursday and then I have stash kit Saturday. And so on Saturdays I use a stash kit and I have already created two for 2017, but I'm using the second one. I haven't used the first one yet. I've just been creating with my second stash kit. I just happen to like the colors of that one for whatever reason. So when I went to pull one out, that's the one I pulled out. Plus it's the one that's the bulkiest. So it was harder to store. So I found it easier to go ahead and have that one, um, you know, in the works instead of sitting it on a shelf because it is kind of a little bit bulkier. I'm going through every little thing that's in this kit to see what else I can add. Whenever I'm working on a page, I always tend to do that because I get to a point as a scrapbooker where I could stop. I could totally stop embellishing and I'd be totally fine with it. Um, but then sometimes when I look at back at some of my earlier layouts, I go, hmm, that just isn't as embellished as I would like. Not that I want it overly embellished, but sometimes like there's a point where it looks good and then there's a point where you can keep going and you can really add to it. And so I try to push it to that next point to where you can really add some things to it and really just make it look very nice. So when I am to the point to where the layout could be done, I continue and I look through to see what else I can do. But as soon as I feel like it's too much, I completely stop. Some people are minimalist when it comes to embellishing. Some people are um, very much put everything they could possibly put on there that looks good and that is beautiful. Um, some people are really into uh, mixed media and I'm not, but um, there's just a really fine balance and you have to kind of figure out what works for you. It's taken me a long time to kind of figure out what works for me. And then I've changed it over time. So I don't know if it's ever, it's ever, I don't know if it's ever going to just kind of settle down. It's just going to be an evolving, um, um, preference, I believe. So I took that white sticker off of the, um, it's a white heart off of the alpha sticker sheet. And I layered it on top of that pink little circle one that I did on the bottom left that I had talked about earlier that I had backed in blue and I didn't like it. So on the still shots, look at that because it's really hard to see on the screen here. Um, but I, and it's what I'm pulling up right now to layer a little, to layer this frame behind. I just wanted a little something on the edges of these photos. And then I'm going to take the little off cuts and put them right here. I'm going to add my journaling. There's not a whole lot left to this layout. I'm going to add my journaling. Um, and then I should be about done. I'll read you the journaling. It says happy thoughts at the top of it. And it just says for Caitlin's birthday, we invited the family to come enjoy the Christmas parade. It is one of the largest parades on the East coast. We love it. Ka the Christmas parade is one of fav Caitlin's favorite, like absolute favorite things to do. He really enjoys it. And we um, go every year, whether we go as a family or sometimes I think um, the very first time he went to the parade, I had to work. So Ernest took him with a friend and they just enjoyed it. And his absolute favorite part are the marching bands. He has always loved the marching bands. He just starts dancing and clapping. I mean, even as a baby, the first time Ernest took him, he um, sat on Ernest's shoulders like the whole time because he was, I think he was two. Um, and he just like clapped and clapped and oh, he loves it. We always try to record um, a clip of the marching bands. Usually um, NC State's marching band comes in the parade. They didn't this year because they had a, um, a game that Saturday. 
our Christmas parade is usually either the weekend before Thanksgiving or the weekend after, and it's almost always in November. So um, it's a little bit early, but Kaylin's birthday is December 2nd, so it always falls near his birthday. But um, anyways, the Christmas parade is a big thing for us, so it just seemed fitting to do it for his birthday when the family could come up because it was on a Saturday. So anyways, that completes this layout. You can kind of see my little pile of scraps off to the side. I will share that in my Killikit video for this Stampin' Up! Memories in the Making kit. I hope you have enjoyed watching me work with this kit. And um, I have another one coming up. So keep an eye out for what is next. Like I said, I think I have like eight kits that I have to work with. <laughs> so um, yeah, I have quite a few kits that I'm going to be working with before I really start um, buying kits again. All right. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoy your day and I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.